Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today I'm painting Dandelion Fairy Dance, and I'm gonna be sipping on some chai tea. And if you enjoy this process, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel, and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're gonna find additional painting perks. So let's get painting, and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretch and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, cobalt blue, Mars black, burnt umber, which I'll call brown, green oxide, and deep yellow. And of course, you can switch up those colors if you'd like, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have three brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number six round synthetic brush, and I have a number two round synthetic brush, and I will refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And of course, you can switch those up as well if you'd like to. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably want to have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas to the same kind of paint and the brushes and all the good stuff in between. So that's there for you. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what I'm gonna be doing for the first step is I'm gonna be painting my sky my, and my background. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors that I'm using are black, brown, blue, and white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna make myself a custom blue to use for the majority of my background. And then I will be using, I'll make it a little bit lighter at the top and dark at the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is I've already pre-mixed mine so you can see where I'm headed with it. I used all of my cobalt blue and then what I did was, I'm gonna utilize this so you can see how I mix this. You use a tiny bit of white because white is really powerful and will lighten it up really fast and then just a little bit of brown and a touch of black. So what we're in essence doing is kind of making the blue, the cobalt blue, a little bit lighter and a little bit duller. So with the brown and the black, that's putting, um, that's kind of neutralizing it a little bit. And the white is adding a little bit more lightness. So somewhere in this vicinity is where I'm headed with it. And then once I've got it in the, in the color tone that I would like to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up just a little bit of it on my brush plus white. So I've got a little bit of the custom blue plus white and I'm going to start at the top of my canvas and I'm going to be going left to right to get my entire background onto the canvas. As I come down towards the middle of the canvas, I'll be using more of the custom blue. And then when I get down towards the bottom of the canvas, I will be using some black in with my mixture. So this way I'm gonna get a nice natural gradient as I come down that sky and it is nice and light at the top and as it goes into that middle I just started pushing my brush a little bit harder because I knew that I had that um, paint, the custom paint on the inside of my brush so now I'm gonna start utilizing that color with some white as well just to get this to blend in and we're just going back and forth left to right so when i do these gradients you'll often find that i put the paint on and then i go back up into the previous section and i just kind of keep going back and forth up and down that canvas in order to get those sections of color to blend in with one another so this just kind of helps as they are um, 
working together and they're kind of drying on that canvas, you're getting them to, to blend in together while they are still on the moist side. And I'm using a good amount of paint so that way I have a nice long continual brush stroke and I can pull that paint all the way across the canvas. And I'm just doing this as a fun, nice, neutral representation of, of, of the sky behind my beautiful D&D lines and my fairies that we're going to be putting on later. But you could certainly do any color background. You could have your background purple, or you could have it pink, or whatever color you would like to incorporate would totally work. You could, it, you could even do this type of gradient with, uh, with a different color. So I'm going to bring the blue all the way down just about to the bottom before I start incorporating the black because I know that I'm going to want to bring that black back up a little bit as well. So I like to overlap when I'm blending. So now that I'm just about down to the bottom, I'm picking up black and the blue. I did not wash my brush and I'm going for a nice deep dark tone down at the bottom and you'll see that I'm going to just kind of get it to blend in with that blue above it and it will get a little bit darker as it dries. So just kind of in your mind's eye, just prepare for that a little bit. And if you want it darker, you can go ahead and add more black to it. And then we are going to be utilizing our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got your background done, you might even find that you want to do a second layer on yours. If you do want to do a second layer, just let it dry for a couple minutes and then you can go back. Whoops, just dropped my paper towel. Um, and then you can go back in and do a second layer if you'd like to, but we'll be using our medium brush for the next step so you can just get ready. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're doing the first step to our large dandelion. So I'm going to be using my medium brush and I'm going to be using just black paint, but I do want to kind of forewarn you that you want to have your canvas dry before you start this step. So, you know, you could take that extra long break if you'd like to. Or you could find some kind of fun fanning method to get it dry. Or you could do as I did and just whip out your blow dryer and dry it that way. Perhaps yours is already dry, but mine wasn't, so I had to make sure mine was dry. So I'm going to be using my medium brush and black paint. What I'm first going to do is put my, my stem on, and then we're going to do um, the main flower area with just our silhouette color of sorts. So how I'm going to do this is I'm going to uh, give myself a couple of a starting point and a stopping point for the stem. So I'm starting mine right about here. So where this is, is it's almost halfway up or halfway down your canvas and it's just to the right of the center. So if this is about the center left to right, I would go over maybe about an inch and then I'm going to be bringing it down to this bottom left hand corner. So I'm going to give myself a marker down in the bottom left hand corner, but I want it pretty wide as it, it's going to be pretty narrow here and get wider as it comes to here. So I marked myself down in the bottom left corner, but I'm also going to make another mark kind of up maybe about an inch, inch and a half. That'll force me to make sure I make it wider as it comes down to here. As I go to do the stem, I'm going to bring it up just a little bit in through here and then curve it back down. So I'm going to start in through here and I've got it maybe about, I would say a quarter, quarter inch wide at the, um, at the front part of it. So something like this and then just bring it up a little bit and then just kind of curve it back down into your, one of your dots. And then what you're going to do is you just kind of make it wider. Keep it nice and narrow at the beginning of the stem. And then as you come down this left hand side, you're going to get it wider and wider so you can meet your other marker. So this is going to give it um, some nice perspective to make it look like it's almost coming closer to us down here in the bottom left hand corner. And then once you've got that on there, we're going to make the little ball center part. So again, I'm still just using black. I'm going to have mine maybe about, I would say an inch and a half wide by an inch and a half tall. I'm not having the top part of it come much higher than where the stem enters it. So something, something like this, something, 
similar to this something something like this that didn't even make any sense and then when I what I'm going to do next is I'm going to do the little stems to the puffy things on the edges so I'm still going to be using black paint but I'm going to use a tiny bit of water on my brush too so what I like to do is I'm just going to kind of dip my brush in my water and maybe just tap it on my paper towel so I have a lot of moisture in my brush and I'm going to be flicking out these little tiny skinny pieces coming out of here. I want them in multi different lengths so I'm starting with some short ones that are maybe about an inch, inch and a half long going all the way around it and I'm just going from the center and just kind of pulling it out like this and then once I've got kind of one layer of them I'm just going to reload my brush with a little bit of black and a little bit of water tap it on my paper towel and now I'm going to make some longer ones. So I'm really just kind of flicking my brush out from that center area and even if you start to pull some of that blue paint because you have water on your brush, don't worry about it. Or if you make a big clunky one like I just did, don't worry about it. The longest ones for me are going to be about halfway between the center and the bottom of my canvas so that's about the longest that I'm going to have them. And because I'm doing these, I did shorter ones first and now I'm doing um, longer ones, it's going to give me a real good um, element within the center where these dandelion um, pieces, they actually have like a thick piece as they enter into the stem. So that this is going to give you that illusion. So I'm just going to kind of keep going until I feel that I have enough of these longer ones. And if at any time you feel that you're pushing your brush really hard or your lines are a little bit too wide for your visual liking, that just means that you probably don't have enough water on your brush or enough paint on your brush because I'm really not pressing hard. I'm just making sure that I have enough moisture on my brush and enough paint on my brush and that's going to give me that illusion and allow me to pull these as far as I want to. And then we're going to use the same brush for the next step. So once you've got this all nice and done and if you do something like that, don't worry about it. We'll have plenty of stuff to cover it up. So I'm going to wash and dry this brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what I'm gonna be doing for the next step is I'm putting the highlight on my stem. I'm gonna be using my medium brush and the colors that I'm using are green, yellow, white. And if I need to, I can go into some black. You do wanna make sure that your stem is dry at this point before you start adding some colors on it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm starting with some green paint. I'm assuming the top of my stem is gonna be the lightest because the light source is up top. So I'm just taking a little bit of green, and this is one of those steps that less is definitely more. The less paint you have on your brush, the more control you will be able to keep. And it will dry nice and fast, and you can just kind of keep adding layers. So I know that I want to have the illusion of it going into the darkness down here in the bottom left. So I'm going to just kind of put some of that green on the top and pull it down into this dark area. And I know that my green is, a, is translucent a little bit and with the black underneath, it will turn darker as it dries. So I am just kind of rubbing it on there. The thicker areas are gonna be a little bit brighter green and the uh, thinner areas are gonna turn darker. So you can do a nice, easy, natural gradient with it that way. So I'm just kind of adding my green up on that top side of it and just a little tiny bit and then just kind of blending it in so it blends in with the rest of that stem and now once I've got that on there now I'm gonna I'm just wiping my brush off on my paper towel and picking up yellow and white paint at the same time this is gonna put a really nice bright highlight at the top of my stem and again I'm just putting a, a little bit and I will be able to move it however far I want to on that stem. So because I'm just kind of putting a little bit on here and just kind of steering it as it's drying, that allows me to control it and make it as bright as I want or as subtle as I want. I think I want a little bit more brightness in through here, so I just added a bit more white to my brush. 
I'm wiping my brush off on my paper towel, gonna pick up a little bit of yellow just to get this highlight to blend in with the neighboring area. And of course, you can keep fiddling with this once you've um, established where you want that brightest highlight to go. You can kind of just keep working that paint into the stem, step away from it for a minute, see if it's if it dries as bright as you want it to dry. You can always keep adding a little bit if you want to. And then we are going to be using this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your highlight on your stem, you can wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the first layer of our wild grass underneath our large dandelion. So I'm gonna use my medium brush. The colors I'm using are black and green. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna consider the bottom area to be the darkest, and I want everything to kind of go out of focus as it goes away. So I'm going to be using water also, but first I'm gonna just use the straight color to get some of the pieces of grass, the more in focus ones um, in place. And then I'll use a little bit of water to just kind of wiggle my brush off in the, f in the distance to get it to be out of focus. So I have straight black on my brush right now. I'm gonna, maybe I'll just start over on this right hand side. And I'm just gonna kind of bring some big pieces of grass up in through this area. And you can really have them as tall or as short as you want, but I'm looking for mine to kind of fade off behind that big dandelion. So I'm just gonna kind of do a few darker ones down at the bottom. And then I can just dip my brush in my water and do some shorter ones or some uh, more, more translucent ones just past those that dark area. So I can almost just kind of run out of paint on my brush with a little bit of water on it. And the water is gonna make it look nice and see-through and it's gonna set it way far off in the distance. So that, that's a little trick to just kind of get some out of focus pieces of grass off in the distance. So just a tiny bit of water on your brush will help you do that. And I'm gonna just kind of get myself some out of focus ones in through here, maybe some all the way up in through here. And then I think I will pull some more in focus ones down in this bottom left hand corner, just bringing some larger ones, maybe pushing my brush a bit harder. So that way I, it, they look thicker and more uh, close to us. I think I wanna pull a couple in front of this, um, the main dandelion, so that way it really looks like we're you know, engrossed in the, 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 I don't know, the dandelion field of sorts. Now I'm gonna, without washing my brush, just pick up some green paint and I'm gonna do the same thing, just kind of adding some green pieces of grass on top of this, but again, because I did not wash my brush and I still have some black on my brush, this is gonna provide me with just a great way to um, incorporate some darker pieces of grass as the the kind of the foundation for the, for the main area of the grass that I'm gonna be doing in a little while. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with dipping my brush in my water in order to get some out of focus pieces of green in the distance. So I just dipped my brush a little bit in water and you can even kind of rub your brush a little bit as opposed to just giving it a, a piece of grass. You can sit here and just kind of rub it in a little bit with the water on your brush. That's going to allow you to get more soft, wider pieces in the, in the distance. So you can certainly have fun with that. And I'm gonna go ahead and give myself a little bit of that out of focus stuff over here on the right hand side. A little bit of water, a little bit of paint on my brush. And this is going to allow me to kind of rub it in and give myself some out of focus pieces off in the distance. And if your background was lighter than mine, you could certainly incorporate a bit of yellow into um, your background, into the out of focus areas. I just added a little bit of yellow onto my brush so you could see what type of effect that that would give. But just again, consider this to be out of focus at the moment. We are just kind of adding the background information into our wild kind of grass down below. And then we are going to be utilizing this same brush for the next step. So once you've got this first layer of your wild grass on here, you can wash and dry your medium brush and get ready for the next step. 
All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing step number two <laughs> on the main flower part of the large dandelion. So I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors that I'm using are brown, black, and white. And what I'm gonna, in essence, kind of be doing is putting some little highlights in the middle for where the um, stems of the flower parts come out and then some little accents along the inside because I don't have technical terminology for these parts, so we're just gonna say say them as we as they look. So I'm putting black, brown, and white all on my brush at the same time. So I actually just dipped the tip of my brush into all three colors. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a series of messy polka dots within the center of this flower. And I have all three colors on my brush so I can get a variety of tones and shades within these polka dots because I want it to look nice and natural. I want you to be able to detect that they're in here, but I don't want them to be overpowering. So I don't want them all to be white, white, white. I want them to have a little bit of diversity. So once I've got my little speckled polka dots in the center, and you can see I'm kind of bringing some all the way to the edges. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thought process with more of these um, streaks in through here. So black, brown, and white on my brush at the same time. And I don't want to do every single piece. So I'm really just going to kind of do a few pieces in here with this lighter tone. And what's going to happen is this will make some of these pieces on the inside look three dimensional. So again, I'm not doing a whole heck of a lot in, um, in these straight pieces. I just really want to give some sort of three dimensional illusion. And by adding a bit of a highlight onto some of them, that will help to create that illusion. And then what I'm going to do with those three colors is I'm going to add a messy area around the exterior. So if you see like one piece of a dandelion, the exterior has um, like a flat piece at the bottom of it. So this is gonna give us the illusion of that within the interior of the flower. So really, I'm just gonna kind of do these almost um, left to right type of motions in this area which is kind of near the exterior of the flower. And again, this is just providing us a piece of the illusion to make it look a little bit more realistic. So you can do little X's if you want to. This is kind of giving you the illusion of the bottom part of that, um, of that little um, piece that flies off. <laughs> I should look these things up, I know I should, but um, I think some of my my viewers will, will help me out in the proper terminology. And I'm gonna do just a little bit over here, but I'm gonna have an open spot over here too, so I don't wanna do too, too much in through there. And then we are going to be using our small brush for the next step. So once you've got this um, area completed, you can put your medium brush away wherever you'd like to, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the first layer of our fairies. So I'm gonna be using my small brush and I'm gonna be using black paint. You could certainly, if black paint scares you a bit when you're doing your figures, you could certainly use a pencil to start if you'd like to, if you feel like you're gonna do some readjusting. But how I'm gonna teach you is I'm gonna teach you to start with a stick figure, which I know we all know how to make stick figures. So we're gonna start there and build it into the shape of a fairy. So I'm gonna use my small brush and I'm gonna be using black paint. Um, I will at times, if I want my paint to be a little bit more fluid and have a nice smooth stroke, I might drop a, do a, a drop of water into my paint and then I take my brush and I just kind of spin it around on the side of my palette and then that will give me a nice pointy tip and allows me to make a nice slender line. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm going to show you how to make a simple kind of, like I said, stick figure, and then we'll build some muscles and shape from there. So I'm gonna have two fairies on the stem of my flower, and then I'm gonna have one flying away. 
So I'm going to start with the one that's closest to my flower first. So I'm going to be going maybe almost about an inch to, to the left of where this main area is. So I'm going to just kind of make myself a little tiny dot in through here just so I know that that's where, where the tip of my toe is going to go. And what I'm going to in essence do is make my two legs in um, just a single line or a single diagonal line. I'm going to bring it to where the waist is and then I'll make a line for the torso. So I'm going to have this particular leg is going to be about, I would say, two, two and a half inches tall. So I'm just going to go straight up from here. And again, this I'm bringing it up to where I feel the waist is going to be. So I'm going to bring this in like this and then just bring it down to where I have made my marker. I'm going to have the back leg of this cute little fairy coming out in this direction. So it's going to be almost as long as this one, maybe a little bit shorter because this is um, going to encapsulate part of the um, other side. So it might end up looking a little bit shorter right now. But once we put all this stuff on, it'll look better. And then I'm going to do a slightly diagonal line that's about half the length of these two lines going up in this vicinity like this. So once I've got my sticks on there, <laughs> now I need to build some, some stuff on my body. So I'm going to start with this back leg in through here. Um, my fairy is facing the flower in through here, so I'm going to put a little rear end on this back side in through here. So a little bit of a butt in through here and just very little bumps are what I'm doing. Then I'm going to put a thigh, so the thigh is going to come up the butt a little bit and come about halfway down the leg, something like that. Then I'm going to put a, a calf muscle on, so the calf is going to be a little bit smaller than my thigh. I think I want to bulk up my thigh just a little bit more, so that way it comes down just a little bit farther to that halfway point. There we go. Now I've got my, my calf muscle on in through here and it just kind of fades into the ankle. And then I have the little heel of my foot. Oops, I have a little hair on my brush that can really screw up a little tiny line. <laughs> so I've got my heel, which is gonna come somewhere between my calf and the tip of my toe. So that's gonna give me my little foot. I need to bulk up the front of the thigh just a little bit. So from that knee area, I just kind of bring this out just a little bit wider I don't need much, just a little bit. And if you felt that in the calf area, you wanted to do that too, you certainly could, but I wouldn't go too much into the calf area. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do the other leg. So I'm gonna start from the butt. So if I start, my butt is here. Oops, I just made it a little bit bigger. So my butt is here, I'm gonna travel down because that's where the leg would come from. This is gonna be my back thigh. It's gonna come about halfway down that leg. And then what I'll do is I'm going to bump out a little calf muscle in through here. And then I will bump out an even smaller piece for my, um, the back, my heel of my foot. So I'm going to put that in right about here and then just make my little point of my toe. And of course you can do any little modifications. I need to do the front of my thigh which is going to blend in with the belly area. So something like this. I'm gonna bulk out that thigh, but just a tiny, tiny bit, nothing major. Something like that, and that'll work. And if yours doesn't get perfect, don't worry, because we've got a skirt that's gonna hide some stuff. So if it's not perfect, no worries. So I brought this up to about where the neck is. So I'm, I've gotta connect the, the um, give myself a little bit of an area where the, the chest is going to be or the neck is going to be. This is going to connect to the butt, so I gave it a little bit of a curve. I want to give a little bit of a chest, not much, just a little bit of a chest. And of course you can make yours in whatever shape you would like to. If you want yours to be larger or smaller, that's totally up to you. And you just kind of keep making it into the shape that you want. I need to put a little head on her now. So I've got the head is going to be kind of facing the um, the dandelion. So I'm going to bring this about up, out to the back of the shoulder in through there. And then just a little oval shape will work. Just make sure it kind of connects to your neck. 
I'm going to give it a tiny little um, bun on the back of the hair. So there's my little bun on the back. I'm going to give a little front to the hair and through here. I'm going to, if I want to, I can put a tiny little nose on there. So I'm just kind of bumping out a little nose and then a little chin. So nothing major. Now I'm going to put a little arm. So the arm is going to come out from the shoulder and it's going to go down towards the leg in through this area. So kind of a little stick figure, but a little bit thicker at the shoulder. And I've only got it coming out right about past the knee, just a little bit. So maybe something like that. Give it a little tiny thumb in through here. And that's really all I'm gonna do for her. We will um, put her wings and stuff on later. And of course you can certainly reshape. I think maybe she needs a little bigger butt in through here. There we go, that works for me. And now I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the next one. So this one I'm gonna have, I want it, you know, to the left of here so it doesn't bump into it at all. I'm gonna put this one right about in through here. And this first leg, she's got, this one's gonna be a little bit taller. I feel like she's a little bit closer to us. So I'm making this first stick figure leg <laughs> maybe about three inches, so a little bit taller than the other one so something like this one that then for the other leg i'm going to be making a diagonal line like this and then it's going to come down something like i would say like this then i'm going to put the torso on in a stick figure kind of way so this is just a little bit angled not much you could certainly do your straight if you wanted to, so something like that. Now I gotta put on my butt, my calf, my thigh. <laughs> so I'm gonna put the butt on in through here. So this is gonna be um, kind of coming out a bit in through here, like this. Then I've gotta put her thigh on. So I'm gonna put her thigh somewhere in this vicinity. Then I'm gonna put her calf. So every bump that I do gets smaller and smaller as I go down that leg. And then I'm gonna put the foot on in through here. I think I need a little bit more paint on my brush. So put the foot on in through here, like that. And then I've gotta put the front side of that leg on. So this is going to be um, the thigh to the other leg, but I still need to put the front thigh of this leg on here. So I'm just kind of starting from here and just gonna bring it down into where I feel the knee is, something like that. And again, if you needed to um, bulk up the front of that leg, you certainly could, but I think mine's okay. So this thigh has to connect to the butt. So if the butt is in through here, I'm gonna just bring it, um, an imaginary line across here, and then bring it up to this knee. So something like this. And again, if yours you know, doesn't come out perfect, it's okay, you're gonna be able to modify it with that skirt on there. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of a, a calf muscle in through here, not much, and then I'll put the little heel of the foot in through there, something like that. I have to give the front of the thigh some something other than a straight line, so I'm just gonna kind of bulk that up just a little bit, give her a little bit of a knee in through here, that works. And then I'm gonna go ahead and give her the, um, her stomach so I'm gonna I know that the leg is gonna come up in through here somewhere so I'm gonna have this torso area somewhere in through here and then if I want her chest to be a little bit wider this is the top of her um, her torso so I can just kind of bulk that out just a little bit in through there and then just bring it back down and again you can certainly modify yours as much as you want to and then I'm going to I think I want her back to be a little bit more arced so I'm going to I'm going to actually bring this out just a little bit and bring this down in through here yeah now she looks more like a dancer to me a dancing fairy so I'm going to put her um, head kind of in a similar position as the other one so I'm going to put it somewhere in through here I do recommend kind of making your heads smaller to start and then you can always make them bigger but it's really tough to make them smaller um, once they're on there. I'm going to have her bun is going to be a little bit more on top of her head 
something like this. Then I'm going to give her that little four, forehead hair, something like that. I'm going to give her a teeny little tiny nose, somewhere in through here, and then a little bit of a chin, something like that. And of course you can keep tweaking your little, your little fairy noses and stuff. And then I have her arm is kind of up flitting up behind her. So I'm going to come from her shoulder in through here like this. It's going to be a little bit wider where it meets her body in through here. I'm going to have her elbow is right about where the top of her head is. So I'm going to have this kind of coming out in this direction like this, but just make it a little bit skinnier where it hits her elbow. And then I'm going to have it coming up in this direction like this. If she needs a little forearm, I can give her a little forearm and I can just give her a little couple of fingers that are just kind of sticking up, nothing major. And then I've got my last one to do over on the right hand side. So this one I've got kind of flying through the air. So I'm going to have the center of the body or her waist is going to be right about here. And as I do this, I'm going to have her legs kind of um, bent a bit like she's flying through the air. So I'm going to have this kind of coming down in through this direction and then bend it at the knee just a little bit like that. And then I'm going to have this one kind of coming out like this and bending at the knee, something like this right in through here. And again, just, just stick figures to start. And then her torso is going to be somewhere in this vicinity. So the torso is usually maybe about half the width of the legs or from, you know, you could in essence kind of break this into three parts. That's a good gauge. Of course, they vary depending on the body shape, but <laughs> it's a good gauge to use. So her butt is going to be over in this vicinity and she's kind of contorted a little bit flying through the air. So I'm not going to give her much of a rear end, something like that. Then she's got a little thigh that goes down to her knee. So this is going to bring it down into here. And then her calf muscle is going to come somewhere in through here. Makes it easier to know where they are when you already have the knee established. And then I've got her little uh, heel for her foot in through here. And then I've got to put the front of her thigh on. So again, not I'm not doing much for the front of the thigh, just kind of bulking out that area above the knee just a little bit so it's not a straight line. And then when I go to do this other leg, I know it's got to come from the butt. So I'm starting at the bottom of that butt and making her, th her thigh go all the way to her knee or close to it with that gradual little curve. So that gives you that thigh. Now I need to put her calf muscle on, on the other side of the knee, somewhere in through here. Then give her a little heel on her foot and then bulk out the front part of her thigh just a little bit, something like that. Now I gotta put her torso on. So this is where her shoulders are in through here. I think I want her back to arc just a little bit like I had the other, the other um, fairy. So I'm gonna bring this out to the left a little bit and kind of dip it back down into that waist and then her front of her body. I'm going to have her more kind of facing up in through there. So I'm going to make her chest kind of going in a more upward direction and then just kind of gradually get it to blend into that waist, something like this. Then her head is going to be a little bit leaning back. So I'm going to put her oval type shape of a head somewhere in through here like that. And then I'm going to put her bun somewhere in through here because I think all fairies wear buns. <laughs> they really have different style here. <laughs> I'm sure they do. In the imaginary world that fairies live in, they have all different kinds of hair. So again, I'm going to bump out the front part of her forehead. And you can see I'm doing a systematic kind of style to each one of them. And I've got a little kind of nose in through. Ooh, that's a cute little nose and a tiny little chin. So just go small when you're doing these little effects on through here. She's gonna be holding a dandelion as it's pulling her, making her fly through the air. So I need one shoulder or one arm to kind of come out of um, her shoulder in through here onto the other side. So I'm gonna just kind of make this 
coming out almost in a straight type of line like this. And then I'm gonna have it just kind of tipping just a little bit and maybe a little bit more narrow where it's gonna go into the flower itself. And then the other arm is gonna come from the other shoulder. So somewhere in through here, of course, you can't see it too much yet, but I'm gonna just kind of come out in this direction, make sure it looks of similar length to the other one. And then I can make this one come out at a different angle, maybe, maybe a little bit less of a diagonal like that. And then that is all we're gonna do for this step. We are going to be utilizing the same brush for the next step. So once you've got your beautiful fairy silhouettes on here, you can wash and dry the small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the stems of the flying dandelion pieces. So I'm gonna be using my small brush. I'm gonna be using black, brown, and white. So I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna start with black paint. And when I look at a dandelion stem of the flying pieces, there's always like a thick, dark black piece that is the part that was sticking inside the flower. So that's gonna be a wider piece at the bottom end of the stem. So I'm gonna have um, one coming out, just kind of coming out in through here. So I'm gonna push my brush pretty hard to start and then as I go towards the tip of it, I'm gonna just kind of release my pressure so it's not pushing it as hard. So I've got this thicker piece in the base and then it kind of gets thinner as it goes towards the end of that. And I'm just gonna do maybe four or five coming in through here. So I think I'll have another one maybe down in through here. So I'm gonna push my brush pretty hard for maybe about a half of an inch to three quarters of an inch. And then I will release my pressure so it's not as um, hard. So it gets a little bit thinner of a line. I'm giving them a little bit of movement so they're not just straight lines. I've got one, I think I'll have one somewhere in through here. So I'm gonna have it pretty thick at the base of it in through here. And then as I bring it up, I'm going to release my pressure so it gets a little bit more narrow. And of course you can reshape them. I think I'm gonna have one kind of coming out the grass over in through here. So I'm gonna push that one pretty hard at the base and then just kind of release that pressure so it looks more slender as it's going out of camera view. And then of course I have the big one that she's gonna be holding on to. So I need this one to kind of make sense. So I think I'm gonna have this one with the bigger part somewhere in through here like this and then i'll have the more narrow part just kind of going into her fingers and then i'm going to have this one kind of bending like it's really kind of pulling her or she's hanging on to it so this is going to give it some good some good movement and then i'm just going to wipe my brush off on my paper towel and i'm going to pick up brown and white paint at the same time to add myself a little highlight on these pieces. So I'm just gonna really do a little bit of a streak of sorts to give them a more natural look to them so it's not just a solid black color, similar to what we did with the area on the inside. So just kind of adding towards the top or towards one side of them so you can still see a hint of the black, um, which gives it the dimension that is nice and realistic. So I've got like that and then a little bit of a line on there. Give myself a little one here, here, and then I've got a little one in through here. And then, and again, I'm not doing it 100% because I want, I want you to be able to see the dark area too. I just want to give it a little bit of dimension. And then we're going to be using the same brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry the small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're finishing our fairies. I'm gonna be using my small brush. The colors that I'm using are black, white, and brown. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna put a very light or translucent layer on with my black and my water first so I can get my, my wings and my skirt and any other um, elements on that I want to. And then we'll come back and do some highlights and um, make it look like the fabric is flowing and all that good stuff. So this time I'm really watering down my black paint. So I have just a little bit 
of the black paint on the side of my palette and I'm really putting a lot of water into it. So it is, you can see as I pull it on the side of my um, palette, it's really see-through. So this is going to provide me with that translucency so we can see through it, still see the stuff behind it, but yet still get a silhouetted type of look from the um, for the wings and stuff. And you can always enhance it and make it darker later, but this will definitely get you going so you um, so you don't go too dark to start. So how I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna put my wings in place and my wings, you can make yours into looking like butterflies or fairy wings or whatever kind of wings you want, uh, angel wings, but they're gonna come out of the back. So I've got this one coming out in through here, just kind of coming in this type of direction. So again, I'm just kind of putting them on there first with my see-through um, black paint. I think I'm gonna have this one kind of coming out of her back and coming up in this direction. And then this is gonna kind of come down in through here, something like that. And of course you can pull up some of those colors if you want to. And then you could have a dual looking one where you can see both sides of it, which I'll show you on the next one. So if you wanna do it on all of them, feel free to do so. So uh, I'm gonna have this wing in through here. I'm gonna have one coming up out of the top kind of of her head so we see it on the other side, something like this. And then I've got this one. Again, they've got to meet the back, so something like that. And if I wanted a dual one where you could see the other side, you just want to kind of give it a similar profile. Then this one I'm going to have coming up in this direction, something like this. And of course, you can have yours certainly shaped differently than mine, and maybe I want to see a little tip of the other one, something like this. Then I've got to put my skirts on. I'll go do the other one in a minute, but I want to put my skirts on on these two. So the skirt I'm going to have coming off of the butt in kind of like a natural flowy kind of way, just kind of coming out in this direction. It's going to kind of drape over the leg in through here. And then right about the knee is where I'm going to kind of just kind of wiggle it and get it to blend in with that tip. I'm gonna do the same thing over on my other girl. So this one, her skirt is gonna kind of come lay down on the back side of her leg in through here. And then right about the knee is where it's gonna kind of just fall, let gravity take over. And then the wind of her dancing is gonna take over. And then over on the front side, I'll have it right about around that knee and then it just kind of comes back and meets in with that one. And if you want to, you can certainly just whatever paint you have on your brush, just kind of pull in through there at the moment. So then I'm gonna go ahead and do the other one over in through here. So I'll do my wings that are coming out the back. These ones are gonna be, I would say, almost as long, if maybe not a little longer than farther than the feet, but of course, again, you can really make yours into whatever way that you would like to. And then I'm gonna go ahead and have these ones come in out, I would say, in through here. And just let your your brush and your and your own, you know, fantasy kind of mind drive you in the direction that, you, that, that is pleasing to you. It does not have to be exactly as mine is. And then I'm gonna put a little skirt on her. So something, I'm gonna bring this one maybe down past her in the front, like it's, you know, it's just being blown in different directions because of her um, being pulled through the air or flying through the air. Maybe this one is gonna come out like this, go maybe over those knees a little bit and come out in this direction. And then once I have it on there, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up a little bit thicker black paint, so with less water in it, and then I'm gonna go ahead and enhance a little bit of this area that's right where it meets the body. Um, it, and if you want to, if your edges are a little bit too bold, you could certainly kind of put some little veins in through there, but I'm just kind of getting a little bit more darkness as it's coming out the body. I still want to be able to see through these, um, these pieces, so this is just adding a little bit more dimension to it so it looks a little bit more in the silhouette. Again, I'm using a little bit thicker black right now just so I can get 
a little bit more definition in some of these um, pieces. I don't want it to all just be see-through and, and too uh, invisible or um, translucent. And then I'm just kind of pulling this out in a light sketchily way. I'm not using a lot of paint. I'm just kind of adding this little um, deep, um, almost of a shadow kind of texture in through it. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do some highlights. So my highlights are going to be, I did not wash my brush. So you can use a little bit of black, brown, and a touch of white. So when you're doing these highlights of sorts, just think of it as you're adding the illusion of fabric. So we want there to look like there's some light that's hitting this fabric in, in places that make sense. So if the light is up top, maybe I have a little bit of a highlight on her. Oops, I need a little more white so you can see it. A little bit of highlight on the fabric up in through here. And then I just kind of pull it down if you have too much paint on your brush, just wipe it off on your paper towel. But you want this to look like it's shimmering and see-through and kind of like it's moving in the, in the wind. So you can certainly use a little bit of water on your brush to keep your paint in a um, fluid type of way. But as I'm doing this, I don't want to lose the look of her leg. So I just make sure that when I'm doing this, I'm not putting too much paint on my brush at any time. I'm really just using a tiny, tiny bit of paint, making sure that I've got it the lightest up in the spot that would make sense. So for me, it would make the most sense if it was the lightest at the top of her leg in through here. And then I just kind of add these little bits of highlights in other places that I think would make sense. Maybe even on the top of her leg, it makes sense to have a little bit of a highlight. Um, maybe on the front of her leg in through here, it would make sense to have a little bit of a highlight. So I'm not doing a whole heck of a lot, just adding these the illusion of light to um, make it look a little bit more three-dimensional. I've got a little bit in her hair, something like this. Maybe maybe she's got some, some hair coming in through here. Maybe a touch on her arm in through here maybe a little bit in that wing. So even in the wing of the, um, going towards the top, maybe adding a bit of a highlight or even in the, in the interior of it would make sense to put, ooh, that looked pretty. Sometimes happy accidents do the best of all. So I just made a little happy accident there with that light color and I like that. So I'm gonna add a little bit more in through here too. So once, and I'm not really doing much. That's kind of all I'm doing for that. I'm gonna move on to the next one. Maybe a little, maybe a little bit more on her knee over here, just so you can really, you can really see her shape in through here. And it doesn't just have to be white. It, you can use that, uh, a lighter version, like a gray or, you know, that brown helps to neutralize it a, a bit. So I just put white and brown on my brush again. And I'm gonna go ahead and add my bit of a highlight to the back of this skirt. I feel like it would definitely kind of be flowing. So I'm telling the viewer the direction that the fabric is going as well as where the light is. So this definitely helps to add the illusion of three-dimensional of a three-dimensional thing as well as you're adding the movement from the um, from the wind and the fabric. So it's a really cool thing to do, especially when you can keep it translucent like this. That really helps to, to sell the story. So that's working for me, maybe a little bit more in through here. And if you do something and you're like, oh my God, that was too much, you can always bring back some of the black. That's a very easy thing to do is just bring back some of that black. I might um, bring her back out a little bit in through here, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Yeah, that works. And I'm gonna put a tiny bit of highlight on her, on the top of her head, just to make sure that we've got a little bit of something up and through there, a little bit on her bun, a little bit on the top of her shoulder, because again, I feel like that's where the light would be coming from. So again, my highlight colors are brown and white. And then I'll put a little a little dazzling highlight in the 
in the beautiful wings. And again, I'm not really doing much. I just want to give you that, that dreamy, you know, feel that these are three-dimensional. Maybe a little more on there. And then a tiny bit on her legs, maybe. She'd have a little one up in through here. Oops, I need a little more white so you can see. A little one up in through here. Maybe a touch on her little foot there. Maybe a little bit on the front of her leg. And then we just have our other little beautiful fairy over here to tackle. So again, just brown and white is my highlight colors. I'm gonna put some in through here, in through here, just giving some movement on this dress and just allowing the viewer to understand where all the pieces of the puzzle lie. And again, I'm not doing a whole heck of a lot. You can, again, even use a little bit of water in, in your paint mixture just to allow for those fluid kind of brush strokes. I'm adding a little bit more in through here. Yeah, that's working. Maybe a touch on her legs and her foot just to give you that sense of form. Then put maybe a little bit on her arms. This one's going to be the far arm. This will be the one that's closest to us. You might want to put yours in a little bit in a different position. I'm not even worried about hands. I, I'm thinking you're... She's, she's flown so far away, I can't even detect where her hands are. <laughs> and then I'm gonna go ahead and put a little, little tiny highlight in these beautiful wings back here. I got her head I wanna contend with too in a second. And you can see, I'm just doing these light sketchily type of brush strokes just to keep the, the airiness to the entire um, thing. She's got a little bit on her head, maybe a little tiny bit on her cute face, and that's all I'm gonna do. We're gonna be utilizing our large brush for the next step. So once you've got your beautiful fairies finished, you can put your medium brush away, take out your large brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the base coat of the white fluffy parts of the dandelion. So I'm going to be using my large brush and I'm going to be using brown and white. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-mix myself a light tan color. So this will be the base coat for them which is going to help add a lot of dimension to them so they look more three-dimensional. So I took some of my brown and then I'm going to add a bit of white to it thinking it's gonna be about equal parts of both, but I might just test the waters before I tell you for certain. Now you need a little bit more white than that. So maybe two thirds white and one third brown. So I'm just going for a light tan color. I want it to be darker than white, so it adds that base coat for us. So when we do put the white on, it's gonna give us a lot of dimension to it. So now that I have it on there, I'm gonna be putting this on the base coat of this big flower, the largest one, all of my out of focus ones, as well as these little fluffy parts. So I'm gonna do the, the flying ones first. I'm gonna use the corner of my brush. And what I'm doing is I'm just going to be doing kind of a, a, a line, something like that, and then using the corner and just pulling up these exterior pieces. I want it to be messy, so don't don't feel like yours has to be perfect. Um, I'm going for definitely a light, kind of airy, fluffy look to these, so they don't have to be perfect. I don't want them to be, but if you need yours to be, that's okay. Um, this one may be, and I'm trying to do them at different angles. You could certainly do all yours at the same angle, but I'm trying to go for different angles. This one, of course, is gonna be pulling her out in this direction, so maybe this one's gonna be our largest of them. And then once I've got that one in place, I'm gonna do a whole bunch of out of focus ones down in my um, ground. So I don't want a lot of paint on my brush. I'm actually gonna wipe it off on my paper towel. I can always pick up more but once it's on my canvas, it's really tough to take off. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just pick some strategic spots and make these really soft areas that are of a circular type of shape. I'm rubbing the paint 
into my canvas. So this is allowing me to have these soft edges around the exterior. If you have too much paint on your brush, you're gonna have a really solid mark. So just, if, if that's happening to you, it just means that you wanna back off on um, the amount of paint that is on your brush. And you can really have some of these overlapping each other. I'm just kind of putting them in, uh, you know, larger at the bottom and kind of making them smaller as they go farther away. And again, I'm just, you can see, I'm just really just using the remnants of the, um, of the paint uh, that was on my brush to get these, these areas in place. And again, you can have as many as you want. I'm gonna have a couple up in through here. This is gonna give us the illusion of the out of focus ones that are off in the distance. You can even bump into your stem a little bit if you want to make sure that you have that illusion as far up and out as you want to. Then I'm gonna reload my brush with more of that tan on it and I'm gonna do the base coat for the center one. So I want a little open spot over in through here as to indicate that's where those ones are flying out of. When I do this, I'm gonna be dotting, but I don't want to dot the whole thing. I wanna be able to see some of the details that are underneath it. I am bringing it a, in a, a large area around the, um, around the flower, but I'm not going all the way into the middle. And again, I don't have much paint on my brush. This is just providing me with that soft, under color that will make it look really realistic. You can even go just past those lines and the tips that we put on earlier. That's going to, again, give you a little bit more of that three-dimensional look to it. So I'm just making sure I go past that just a little bit. And you can, you can see I did not reload my brush yet. This is just giving me all the paint that's in my brush is giving me all I need to accomplish this step and you can bring it, dot it into the middle a little bit. You don't have to go all the way, but if you have a very tiny bit of paint on your brush, this will just add those little elusive kind of speckles that are gonna make it look really nice and realistic. And then we are going to be utilizing, and you can see, I can still see my lines of what I did before underneath it, which is my intention. So we're gonna be using our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got this base coat on these, you can put your large brush away, take out your medium brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're finishing our wild grass. I'm gonna be using my medium brush, and the dominant colors that I'm gonna be using are green, yellow, and white, but I may go into my black or my brown if I feel like I want some more dimension in them. But I already have a nice dark base for my grass. Um, I did notice that I missed my little shadows on my fairies for the blade of grass. So we're on a grass step. So I'm, I'm considering this to be part of the grass because we're putting a shadow on the grass. <laughs> so I'm gonna put a little bit of black and brown on my brush at the same time. I'm gonna go from the toe and I'm just gonna give it kind of a curved line to indicate the shape of the piece of grass. So something like this. This is just giving you that tiny bit of a, you know, of a realistic element that would definitely happen out in nature. And the shadow can get bigger as it goes farther away. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing to this little lady over here. So we're gonna just go from her tippy toe and then just bring it at the top here and make it travel as far down as I want. So maybe something like that is excellent. And then I'm just gonna quickly wash and dry my brush. And I'm gonna do some wild grass. So I want all of this grass to be kind of in between the dandelions. It doesn't have to all be in focus. There's gonna be some out of focus as I go farther away, but I just kind of wanna make it more wild and bright. So I just put some green and yellow on my brush at the same time. I'm gonna go in between and even you can pop it in front a little bit of these out of focus pieces or the, the fuzzies, the fuzzy, <laughs> gosh, sometimes I just don't sound that smart. The, um, the flowers that we have in focus down, they'll be in focus. You can put some in front of those. You can put them really wherever you'd like to but really I'm just trying to add 
more dimension to my grass, making it as wild as I want and as vibrant as I want. So I just picked up some more or some white paint with my yellow and my green. I'm getting some pieces to go in front of this uh, main stem in through here. And I'm just gonna kind of keep alternating my green, yellow, and white. And again, if I feel like I want to or need to dip back into the black or the, um, or green or anything, I can certainly do that. But I'm really just kind of looking to add the, the vibrancy to it. I'm trying to keep it maybe a little bit darker as it's going, you know, into that bottom left or bottom right corner. But if, I, if, I, if that gets bright too, that's okay. And I just kind of move my brush really nice and fast and just kind of let my, my intuition kind of kick in as I'm doing these. I'm trying to keep it, you know, in between these flowers. So when I do put the, um, the final detail on those flower heads, they'll have these little pieces of grass kind of just popping through every now and again. And you could certainly do, again, as much grass as you wanted to. You could have it brighter or taller. You could add little ladybugs or any kind of other information that you want to in your wild grass. But once you've got as much on here as you would like, ooh, I think I'm gonna put a couple of taller pieces up in through here. I'm bringing this color up here because I think, I think it's gonna balance nice and well. So I just did some up here. Oh yeah, because it's the nice light green. Mm-hmm. Here we go with these highlights. I'm telling you, the highlights are, are my friend. And then once I've got as much on here yeah, as I want, I'm going to be switching back to my large brush. I think I just want to darken some of this down here, make sure that this kind of remains a little bit more dark down here. Um, so I will be um, putting this medium brush away if I can ever stop my wild grass. And then I'm gonna take out my large brush and, oh, I brought, I brought some brown onto my brush. I probably should have told you that when I went down into this darker area, I brought some brown onto my brush. Um, I will be switching to my large brush for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are finishing our dandelions. So this is gonna be the final fluff that we're putting on our dandelions. I'm gonna be using mostly white paint, but if you feel that you wanna go into that tan color, again, you can certainly do so. So my whole goal here is I wanna make this one really in focus and really vibrant. And then a couple of these ones in the grass, I'd like to make those pretty, um, in focus as well. So that's gonna mean that it, you're gonna see the speckles a lot more than the ones off in the distance. However, I do want to make the ones off in the distance have a little bit of dimension to them as well. So I'll put a little bit of lightness on them as well. And I'll also get the white to um, emerge from these little pieces too. So I'm going to load my brush with white paint. And again, not a lot. So I'm, cause I'm gonna work on the ones down below first. So not a lot, a little bit on the tip of my brush. You can even, once you get it on there, just kind of dab it on your paper towel. And as I'm doing this, I'm going to be just using the corner of my brush to start. And that's going to allow me to kind of control where I want these dots to go. And the only way I'm, a lot, I'm getting these individual speckles is because I don't have a lot of paint on my brush. If you have a ton of paint on your brush, you're gonna get these really large globby kind of um, dots. So less paint will equal more defined dots. And I'm just gonna kind of go through each flower and get as much fluff into it as I want. The ones that are in the front here, I am gonna put a little bit more um, brightness to them, which means I'm gonna kind of layer my dots a little bit heavier so they end up looking more um, alive and in focus. But when I get to the back ones, you'll see I'll be almost rubbing it a little bit more than dotting and speckling it. And you can 
add layers of the white. So let's say I'm doing it this way. You'll see I'll probably come back to these front ones to add another layer, which will uh, on like the top of them, which will make them stand out a little bit more. But right now, oops, that's a little bit too much paint on my brush. Right now, I'm just kind of getting the speckles on, getting the ones that I want to to show up and be in focus, and then. I think I want one or two up and through here, nice and in focus before I start um, really tackling the out of focus ones. Maybe maybe we'll have a, a good one that's in focus in through here. And you can see I'm just kind of working in the, the areas that I began with the soft um, rubbed in spots. So now I'm moving my way back towards the ones that are out of focus. So I can almost, I haven't reloaded my brush. I'm just kind of using whatever remnants are on my brush to kind of elevate that brightness of some of those. So maybe a little bit here. And it, I'm not doing it to the entire flower. I'm just doing it to more more so the top side of it and trying to keep that little bit of a, of a circular kind of appearance. And then if I wanted these ones to be more in focus, I can come back and add another almost more intense area of that white paint. And that's going to tell the viewer how three-dimensional this is and how close it is. So you can certainly come back once you've you know done the first round with it, which we'll do that up top as well, um, you can come back with a little bit of a second layer to get parts of it to pop out just a little bit more. So if I wanted this one over here to kind of pop out a little bit more, I can come back with just a little bit more of that white and really get it to just kind of elevate that in focus aspect of it. And then I'm going to tackle this in through here. So right now I don't have a lot of paint on my brush. So I'm starting the, the layer of sorts like I did on the ones in the field or on the ground. And you can see that I'm not dotting the entire thing. I want to be able to see the stuff underneath. So if I just go, you know, hog wild here with a super overloaded brush, it's not going to give you that three-dimensional effect of it. So this is a control type of step. You really just have to work at it patiently, just kind of keep adding your, your, your dots that are not really vibrant or not really thick with paint. Um, but they, I am using white as opposed to the tan, so you're going to start to see them emerging on top of that tan. But again, I'm not painting the whole thing. As I'm coming around this side, you can see I'm kind of leaving some of this open, but you can speckle it just a little bit in through here. And while that's kind of drying for a second, I'm going to go ahead and hit these and then I'll come back and get that to um, pop out even more. So again, I'm just putting some white paint on my brush. When you get to these ones, if you wanted to switch brushes, you could certainly do so because I'm going to be using the corner of my brush and kind of swiping it. Um, but it, I'm going to use this brush, but you could certainly use your medium brush if you wanted to. So I just kind of add that little white line and then just kind of pull out these fluffy kind of ends to it. And I'm going to do that to all of them. If you want to use this brush and it's splaying out on you, what I like to do is I like to take it and squish it in the side of my palette in my paint and that will bring my bristles together and it gives me a little bit more control over what's happening. But I like it because it's going to give me that little hairy look around um, the edges of these pieces. So sometimes when I use a smaller, more detailed brush, it looks a little bit too uniform for me. So by using these larger brushes that have um, a higher chaotic level to them, it makes it, for me, makes it look a little bit more natural. But of course, you can certainly work with whatever you're comfortable with and get it to look in whatever manner you would like. But this is how I'm gonna be doing it. And then once I've got these little guys, those are looking nice and fluffy, I'm gonna go back and hit this one. But before I hit it with my heavy dots, I wanna give it this little feathery edge to it. So while I have this little bit of white paint on this brush, um, 
on the edges, what I'm going to do instead of my dotting, I'm going to kind of swipe it a little bit. So I'm going to just take it and kind of swipe it. And it doesn't have to be at all the way to the edge. I'm inside just a little bit. And this is giving me that look of these little fluffy things around the edges, these little um, more straight, hairier pieces around the edges. And I'm going to, I'm going ahead and going all the way around like this. And of course, I'm not painting the entire thing. I'm just letting, letting my brush kind of take, take those edges away, leaving this open spot in through here. Now I'm going to reload my brush for the final, probably the final time to add that real heavy kind of the brightest bright that I want. And I, again, even though I reloaded my, my brush and I want it to be pretty darn bright, I'm not smashing my brush all the way into the canvas. I'm really just kind of tap, tap, tapping it, not hitting it too, too hard, but you can see I'm elevating this bright area, making it look even more three-dimensional. And it doesn't have to be the brightest just at the edges. I've got it kind of a little bit brighter as I'm going in towards the um, flower a little bit and towards the center a little bit. And of course you can keep tweaking yours all you want. If you feel like you went too far and it's too, too bright for you, you can always bring back some of that tan color to dull down some of that white a bit. And then you can, um, that will help to give you that three dimensional um, look because if it's all just white, 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 you might not be able to accomplish that three dimensional appearance to it. And then we have one tiny little step left to go and it's gonna be with our small brush. So once you've got your dandelion all nice and fluffed out and you've got all your little pieces as, as floaty as you want them to, you can put your large brush away, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right corner. I think I'm going to be um, signing this one in the bottom left. I'm using my small brush and black paint. I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna kind of hide it in the grass over here. I do my initials, but you could certainly do your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you'd like for your identifying mark to be. It's your painting, you sign it however you would like to. And that is gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself some very fancy fairies and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.